Hi, I'm Phil Salmony, a technical consultant for Altium. And in this video, I'll show you how to do a power distribution network analysis of this very simple board I'm holding here, all the way through from setting up the design and then simulating it. If you'd like to give Altium Designer a try for yourself, check out the link in the description to get a free trial of Altium Designer. We'll be exploring the PDN Analyzer, the Power Distribution Network Analyzer, which you can add on to your Altium Designer software. This is really cool and lets you analyze your power distribution networks while and after you've routed and laid out your board to see if you can maybe optimize your power distribution, for example, high current densities or too great of voltage losses. And this is a really powerful tool. And in this video, I'd like to show you the basics. The board we'll be looking at to try out this PDN analyzer is very simple and I chose this for a reason because we simply have a power input via this USB-C connector, one single voltage rail at 3.3 volts which is generated by this LDO regulator at the top here and that's powering one microcontroller as well as a codec, so ADCs and DACs in one chip. So a fairly low current, low power device but I thought this would be interesting and simple enough for us to try out the PDN analyzer with. Here we are in Altium Designer, and this is a 3D view of our PCB, and I'd like to guide you through just the schematics briefly so we get an overview of the system. Again, this is very simple. This was meant to be some sort of digital signal processor and a little test board to write some DSP algorithms with. There's three schematic pages, the first being this power supply. Essentially, it's just some filtering of the power rail that's coming from the USB connector, so nominally five volts through this Pi network into this low dropout regulator and a simple on LED. We have to keep in mind, we have to model the power flow from the power connector, which is a USB-C type, through the ferrite bead as a series element, giving us five volts into the regulator and the regulator steps that down to 3.3 volts. And then we have loads attached to 3.3 volts, for example, this LED, but then more significantly, the microcontroller, which is an STM32F4 microcontroller located on the second schematic page. Anyway, that'll be in the order of tens of milliamps. And our power connector is also located here. The final schematic page contains the codec IC, which is also driven by the 3.3 volt rail. And this will be on the order of, again, tens of milliamps at most. So let's move over to the PDN analyzer to model this system and then analyze the results. So now that we've gone through the basics of the schematic, let's see how we can set up the PDN analyzer in Altium. We can start the PDN analyzer by going to the top toolbar, clicking on tools, and then PDN analyzer. The first thing we have to do is identify the DC nets in our design. The PDN analyzer helps us do that and filters out some nets that it thinks that may be DC. We have 3.3 volts, which is the output of the 3.3 volt regulator. We have 3.3 volt analog, which is fed via another Pi filter to the codec to feed the analog section. We have five volts after our first ferrite bead. We have ground at zero volts and VUSB, which is a nominal five volts. Once these are selected, click on add selected and then click OK. This is where we'll now start to model our system. First of all, let's go into the network and you can see we have a power net and a ground net. We start from a USB connector at VUSB and want to feed through a series element to give us five volts. And this essentially will be our first network. So our ground net, double click, is ground of course, and our power net will be our input voltage, which is VUSB. So double click, VUSB. You can see at the bottom we have four names, ground, power, source, and load. We have ground and power, but the PDN analyzer requires minimum one source and minimum one load, of course, to analyze the system. So our source will be from the USB connector. Let's add that first. Right click, add source. I will choose it's a voltage source and it's from the reference designator J200, which is our USB connector. We can check that the pins make sense. We have two pins because it's a USB-C connector and two ground pins. At the bottom, we need to check the parameters. V out is at five volts nominally. We could model any sort of contact resistance at R out and maximum power pin current. But because USB-C connectors and the one specifically in this case can handle about one and a half amps, you know, and our system draws a maximum of 100 milliamps, I'm just gonna leave this at zero, which is the don't care state. Then click okay. Next, we have to add our series element, which is this ferrite bead. The way you do that is by extending the net. So right click on VUSB at the top, click extend net, and we want to extend that, so feed it to go to five volts. So select plus five volts. And now we need to define what this series element is. So double click, and we're gonna choose ferrite bead 100. And it's automatically identified input and output pin that it goes from VUSB to plus five volts. Now these parameters down here are interesting because for voltage drop, you might need this if you're using, for example, a diode. So a diode will have some sort of forward voltage drop, and this is what you'd enter here. 
Resistance and max current are, of course, defined for a ferrite bead. The ferrite bead I'm actually using this design is an 0402 Viot Electronic nominal 120 ohm impedance bead. If we scroll down or look at the data sheet, we can see the maximum DC current is 1.2 amps, so plenty for application, and the DC resistance is in 90 milliohms. So going back, we have our DC resistance of 90 milliohms and a maximum current of 1.2 amps, and click OK. So in the PDN analyzer, we have our voltage source, which is the connector, providing VUSB through the series element to 5 volts. Now we have to specify a load, and the load in this case will be our voltage regulator, which steps this down to 3.3 volts. Later on, we'll then generate another network, which is our 3.3 volt network, which has the regulator as a source. So right click, add load, and this time we want to choose a voltage regulator module and a linear one because this is an LDO regulator. Our input terminal is five volts, our output is 3.3 volts, and our reference is our ground. Then we can assign which symbol this is, and it's U100, our voltage regulator, and it's correctly assigned pin two, three, and one. The parameters for V out are of course 3.3 volts, R out we don't really have, you know, we can't really model a series resistance, and the bias current is so low that it's pretty much negligible for this design. We do however have maximum current limits and maximum power dissipations, and we need to check the data sheet. This is the regulator I'm using, it's an HT7533-1 fixed 3.3 volt output regulator. We can already see the output current is up to 100 milliamps, and scrolling down I'm using the SOT89 package and that has a power consumption of 250 milliwatts. I out max is 100 milliamps, and maximum power is 250 milliwatts. Then click OK to save. Now we've generated our first network, so going from the USB connector through our ferrite bead, 5 volts, and our regulator as a load. Now we need to create our 3.3 volt network before we continue with analysis. So right click on the load, our regulator, and we want to add our regulator to a new network. Now you can see on the left we have a VUSB network, which is our previous network, and we have this new 3.3 volt network. And this time the regulator is our source, and 3.3 volt is our power net. Now we can add loads. So let's just check what loads we have. A very simple low current load is of course this LED. And this is interesting because it's not just the LED, but we also have this series resistor. So let's try and model that. Right click, add load. I just want a simple current type load. We want to feed into the anode of the diode, which is D100, which is the anode pin. But on the output, we want the second pin of R100. So where the ground pin is actually R100 pin two. The load current in this case, because of the voltages and the LED color is just a milliamp. So pretty much insignificant, but it's interesting because we have this series resistor. Press okay. More significant loads are of course the microcontroller, which it runs off 3.3 volts. And for microcontrollers, it can be sometimes quite hard to find actual current consumptions or direct figures, so we're going to go with an order of magnitude. For this, I'm using the STM32F4 power mode application note, and for an F4 microcontroller, we typically get a figure for microamps per megahertz, so typically this would go up to under 50 milliamps. And this gives us a nice order of magnitude of what to put into the PDN analyzer. I'll just add a load with 50 milliamps modeling the microcontroller. So right click, add load. And this time, again, it's an IC current load, and we're choosing designator U200, which is our microcontroller. If we click on the pins, we can see what power pins are connected, VBAT, VRF Plus, and VDD. Now, VRF Plus actually isn't a power pin in this STM32 microcontroller. It's more of a reference pin, so we can get rid of that. Ground pins, let's check VSSA, VSS, and the pad of this QFN package. The load current is 50 milliamps. And for microcontrollers, and specifically for higher performance ICs, such as FPGAs and system on chips, you might have very narrow tolerances around the nominal supply voltage. For microcontrollers such as this, you can probably get away with plus minus 10%. Indicating the minimum maximum voltages here is good because the PDN analyzer will give us some sort of pass fail analysis of our voltage rails. Lastly, we have the codec, and here we have two voltages. We have the digital supply voltage, which is at 3.3 volts, IOVDD, and the analog section is powered by 3.3 volts analog, and this is running through this ferrite bead as well. So remember from the first time with the ferrite bead, we have to do a similar series element. So let's add the digital load first, and for this codec, I'm gonna assume 10 milliamps for the digital side and 10 milliamps for the analog side. So right click, add load, digital side first. This is U300, again, an IC current load. We need to be careful with the pins. We just want IOVDD and not LDO select. That's just a GPIO. Let's check ground, and we don't want SBI select. The rest is fine. That's just a signal pin. 
load current is 10 milliamps and the voltage limits will give plus minus 10 percent okay so now we have all the digital sections modeled let's do the series element for the ferret bead again right click extend net to 3.3 volts analog we need to define the series element as before and this time this is ferret bead 300. remember from the data sheet this was a 90 milliamp dc resistance and 1.2 amps of maximum current now we've extended our net and we of course have to add our load to 3.3 volts analog so right click add load current load u300 and let's check the pins again and removing spi select setting the load current and the voltage tolerance so now we've set up our simulation we have usb voltage at the input which is nominally 5 volts from our connector series farad bead 5 volts our regulator as a load then the regulator as a source again providing 3.3 volts to the led microcontroller digital side of the codec via a series ferrite bead to the 3.3 volt analog section now we've set up a very basic power distribution network and we're ready to simulate and then analyze the results you'll see this next step is really straightforward so let's look into it once we're happy with that we can check and select our overall network and then click analyze once the analysis is complete this is where the really cool part begins we can check out the current densities voltage distributions, losses, and so forth per rail along each plane in 3D views, 2D views, and so on. There's many, many features we won't be able to cover in this video, but I'd like to just give you a brief overview. We can switch between voltage and current density, and we always have a changing scale underneath. Right now, I'm just looking at a 3.3 volt rail in 3D view, so I can look around the board. Essentially, red means our nominal voltage, and anything that goes into the blue color means voltage losses. However, our design is so low current that you can see the scales 3.3 volts on one side, 3.3 volts to one decimal place. So we're hardly getting any voltage drops anywhere. We can also probe and then hover over a various parts of the design and see what the voltage is. So at the right of the regulator output, we might get 3.3 volts, but somewhere further away, you know, at the coding input, we get 3.298 volts because of various losses in the copper and so forth. We can also check other rails, for example, the analog rail over here, which is after the ferrite bead, we can see the losses through there. Or we can combine all of the rails together and also change how these are shown together. So our USB connector, five volts coming out here through the ferrite bead filtering network into the regulator, out of the regulator, 3.3 volts, into the microcontroller, codec, and so on. Of course, we can also see this in 2D view if you prefer. We can also check out current density and you can switch the units to amps per millimeter squared, and red areas are where there's particularly high current density, blue where there isn't. And you can imagine the single trace that goes out of the 3.3 volt regulator carries all of the current, but then splits along these variant current carrying traces. So we can see immediately where we have maybe problem areas and higher current designs. So this is really, really useful. We also show current directions with the arrows and also check the current flows in the ground planes in layers two and three of the board. So really, really neat stuff. Another option is also to highlight peak values. So if I highlight peak values, you can see my peak current density might be over here, as one could maybe expect. And for voltage on the five volt rail, we might get a peak over here. On the 3.3 volt rail, of course, at the regulator output, we have the peak voltage. There are many more options. We can also get pass fail reports from the PDN analyzer, but I hope this video provided a brief, simple introduction to the capabilities of the PDN analyzer. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. If you aren't already, please make sure to subscribe to Altium Academy's YouTube channel for more content on electrical engineering, PCB design and all things Altium Designer.